Hey, what's happening, guys? Today we're going to talk about PCB trace width and thickness and current handling capabilities. So the trace is, of course, the copper that is deposited on top of your substrate, which is you know generally fiberglass, but it could be other things. So we'll just call it the substrate. And you're going to have two, well, you're going to have three measurements. You're going to have the thickness, the width, and the length. The wider, thicker, and to some extent, the longer the trace is, the more current, the more power it's going to be able to handle without overheating and burning up. I'm sure you've all seen burned up traces on circuit boards before that have to be repaired. Well, what happens if they've had too much power, either through a short circuit or a design that didn't take into account the amount of power that was required. So the wider and thicker the trace is obviously going to be able to handle more. If you've ever bought one of these DC to a DC converters, the high power ones, this is a 400 watt one. If you look here, this is the high current part of the circuit and you can see they removed the solder mask from this thick trace here and they have actually added solder on top of it basically to increase the area and increase the current handling capabilities. So that's what we're going to talk about. Now this information is, is printed and specified right here in IPC 2221A. Okay, this is from the Association Connecting Electronic Industries. And it's going to give you a lot of information about PCB design. You can come down here and find all this stuff. But one thing you're going to find as we look down through here, electrical properties, thermal management. Somewhere in here it talks about it. Here we go. Down here in Section 10, General Circuit Feature Requirements. We have, uh, uh, where is it at? There it is. 10.1.1 conductor width and thickness. Now I'll put a link to this um, specification down below so you guys can check it out, but there's an easier way to go about this. It's a trace width calculator. Here's one I found from Advanced Circuits. Now in our experiment today, we are going to put 5 amps through 1 ounce of copper in three different trace widths. Widths, you know, because sometimes I can't even talk. And this is not, an, you know, these aren't multi-layer boards, so we just have layers in air. And you see our required trace width here, I don't like mils, Hang on. millimeters. So for 5 amps on 1 ounce of copper, we're going to need a trace width that's 2.77 millimeters wide in order to dissipate some of this heat and be able to function. Now, I don't have anything that thick. The ones I designed are much smaller. For instance, our smallest one is 0.254 millimeter. And won't let me do it that way. But anyway, if we come down here, here is how we calculate the area and here's how we then calculate the width. And this is the important one. The width in mils is equal to the area in square mils divided by the thickness, that's our ounces of copper, times 1.378 mils per ounce. All right. I'll put a link to this down below too. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. And if you go to PCBWay.com, go to their instant quote and scroll almost all the way down to the bottom of the page, what you're going to find here is the finished copper thickness. There's the standard one ounce, two ounce, I mean, you can go way up there. But that's something to keep in mind when ordering your boards, especially when dealing with high current. All right, so here are the boards that I got back from PCB way. And as you can see, we've just got three different trace widths on there. Nothing too special. We're going to put some power through them. 
we're going to measure them with the old infrared thermometer and we're going to see what it does so let's start by taking our voltage up as high as it'll go in this beautiful new power supply I'd like to thank my friend who sent me this power supply beautiful thank you very much and we'll do the same thing for the current maximum current all right so I've taken one of the boards and I've soldered some wires onto it here and we'll hook it up we'll start with the smallest trace this is the default trace that most of your EDA programs are going to give you 0.254 millimeter which is perfectly fine for handling signal but as you're soon going to see it's not good for handling power there's obviously no polarity here doesn't matter how we hook them up yeah put something behind that good and then let's energize this so we're putting almost six watts through it five amps put the laser on there and you can see it's getting pretty hot There we go, 180, 185, 203, we're up to 7 watts, and that is eventually going to burn through. So we'll shut that off, and we'll let it cool for a minute. Our max was 203. Our min was 98. At 200 degrees Fahrenheit, or whatever that might be in Celsius, this uh, board and your components are not going to last very long. All right, so that was our small one, 2.54 millimeter. Now we're going to go, we're going to double it to 508 millimeter still a little warm I'll be back in a minute all right been a few minutes 76.5 we'll energize and you notice already we've seen a lower voltage and current is still the same 95, 96. We'll give it a few seconds. And we'll shoot it again. 103. Try it again. 110, 112. You can see the temperature is definitely climbing. 120. But this has been on for about the same length of time as the other one. We're seeing a max of 120, minimum of 100 there. 125. So basically, we've doubled the width. We've almost cut our temperature in half. We'll let that cool, and then I'll be back again. While that's cooling, one of these infrared thermometers are really nice to have. Now this one in particular is called an Ames, and I got it from Harbor Freight, but the exact same thing are available online under the Kaizen or Kizen brand, and I'll put a link to it down below if you're interested. These are less than 20 bucks, and really, they are fantastic. Good to have if you know, you're troubleshooting stuff. All right, let's see how this thing feels. Not bad. All right, let's hook it up for the last one. This is the 
1.016 millimeter. This is our thickest track on here. And it is four times the width of the smallest track. Remember, we had about, what, 220? This one was like 120. So put in your guesses now as to what you think the temperature is going to be on this one. Powered up. 85. Now you see our voltage has gone down again and our wattage has also gone down again. Ninety two, ninety three. Where are we at over here? Point five three, two point six. Looks pretty good. I mean, it looks like we're going to stay right around a hundred degrees or under. And that is awesome. And that's what I wanted to show you today. When we put that on the 0.254 millimeter, this board was so taut I couldn't even touch it. it. If we'd have left it on there for a few minutes, it would have burned through. But now we've been on there. I haven't turned it off. It feels slightly warmer than my skin. So I hope that you guys will keep that in mind. I'm going to turn that off so I don't actually shock or burn myself. I hope that you guys will keep that in mind if you're designing PCBs for yourself. If you've got the real estate, it's never going to hurt to increase the width of your tracks a little bit. And if you don't have room to increase the width of your tracks a little bit, when you order your boards from PCB Way, increase the copper thickness. That will help as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this video today. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Huge thanks to PCB Way for being a great sponsor all these years and making these videos possible for you guys. Huge thanks to you guys for watching. I wouldn't be here without you. I'd just be talking to myself here in the dining room. I'm sorry. The laboratory. <laughs> That's it. I'm out. Peace. Hey, doglies. What you think about track width and thickness? Are they important considerations in PCB design?